So Jay, in our prior episode entitled The Pilot, we had, I think we both agreed, a rocking and rolling adventure with lots of action. Here, we step back perhaps a little bit in the episode Guns for Hire. What are some of either your initial observations or maybe even initial questions? I, I think once again, some lucky celebrities won the uh, Lorian Pit Bake Off or whatever. They, they must have bought like some tickets at the Qantas Club and said, Jack Black, if you want to be on an episode of The Mandalorian, whoever would have thought the creative teaming of Jack Black and Lizzo coming together for one episode only and then playing a crazy version of a Space Croquet with a Groku. Where does the imagination take us? We can go anywhere in this episode and why not bring in Jim from Taxi just to complete the references out there? So I was just blown away by the different guest stars that were in this episode. I thought of Ricky and Lucy when I saw them together. They were so Jack and Lucy. They were so <laughs> over the top. And Jack Black is a wonderful comedian. You, because of his size, you somehow for, sometimes forget the physical comedy he can get away with because he can use his body in a, such a comedic fashion. And he did here. And it was completely over the top. It was not close to anything. And I love Jack Black, so it's pretty cool for me to see him. But I was, as you, I was equally surprised to see him in an episode of The Mandalorian. And then that whole that whole scene, I guess I had trouble kind of putting that kind of, not so much over the top, but conspicuous consumption in the New Republic. We saw some of that in the third trilogy of Star Wars, and I would have expected that from a more autocratic regime, such as the Empire, but I thought the New Republic was a little more egalitarian. Perhaps there are rich people everywhere, so even those that are super wealthy and super stupid. Did you know that there were separatist droids around? I didn't until this episode. I mean, I always thought droids were apolitical, but I, I guess I've been proven wrong. They can be separatists. Uh, yes, they can, and they are. So we had that going on. The uh, audience with bo where with the Mandalorian privateers, where she asserts her role for leadership, and then Darjen admitting that it was really bo who rescued him even though he had won the lightsaber in battle, I thought was a pretty interesting, not morality tale, but really showed it, how Dar uh, Dar in really has an internal code as well. So I enjoyed that part of the story, but we really slowed down in terms of the action and the speed and Loppery was the most probably of any of uh, the Mandalorian episodes. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say that this was filler, but they, they still have that liberty to go off in any direction. And as long as they take care of it in the 45 minutes, they'll, they'll be fine. But did we really have to have misbehaving robots who got together at a bar? Oh, what was the name of the bar? It was like, it was, it was a very funny machine type of, I'll have to see if I can find it in my notes. But, oh, it's called the Resistor. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. they figure out that they're getting bad juice when they're bathing their battery batteries that they have. What are they? Nano machines who are co-opting their programming. So that whole thing that they had to come in, they had to find out, they had to do their Sam Spade Marlowe thing about I'm a gumshoe. I'm trying to find out about what's happening to your droids and then bringing it back to Christopher Lloyd. So again, I don't know. I think other filmmakers might not have had the the ability to do something like this. And I think these were made pre-Bob Iger on his second return to Disney or on his return to Disney. And I'm wondering now with all the cost cutting, whether there might have been only seven episodes in this season instead of eight. What say? Maybe even six. And that, yeah, that really brings up one of the points I wanted to maybe ask you about. And you mentioned the term filler episode. Is that a real thing where you do you have so much money budgeted you have to spend? Do you have so many episodes you have to hit? You just 
you want to lengthen out the storytelling, what leads to a filler episode? If even if you don't think this one is one. I mean, some of it is contractual that nowadays we're looking at eight episodes for a season. We used to look at people doing 13 episodes or half the season or doing 21 or 22 or 23. And that all comes from the fact that right now we're able to stream our favorite series. In the past, there wasn't any streaming. You were waiting for whatever must-see TV on NBC. Hill Street Blues was 10 o'clock because it was a racy show, and you knew you'd see Hill Street Blues every Thursday at 10. Now you're getting all these streams getting dropped at once. So contractually, you don't have to hit that anymore. But before, the milestone was 100 episodes. And if you made 100 episodes, you could get sold into syndication. And that's where the writers and the directors and the actors get their money. And we're having a strike now, basically, because we do one-tenth of the output that we used to do. That you're now getting sometimes an episode, or rather a season streamed is four episodes or six or eight. So imagine all that stuff that you have to make up. You really... I don't think they're fillers now because there's it's what is what you get. You're using a different paradigm for telling your story. And you might have somebody like This Is Us and say, okay, we're going to have six episodes and we're going to know from the beginning, beginning to the end. But right now you don't have as much leeway to do that. And then one of the questions I wanted to save for the end, but we could tease it now is, what do we think about, is there season four coming back? Supposedly, Favreau's written the episodes, and they've been ready for the last two years, but you can't touch them with the Writers Guild strike. And supposedly, season four has been pushed back now from September to November. It doesn't look like we'll be seeing any Mandos in the calendar year 2024. Jay, was there anything in this episode that you really thought was either necessary or useful to advance the story? And I'll start off by answering my own question because I thought telling this, the story of what happened with Bo-Katan was necessary so that she could assume leadership, even though she didn't win the dark saber in battle. He made it clear that she had saved his life, and maybe under the the code that allows you, if someone saves your life, you can either forfeit your right or you can pass along some right you might have. Yeah, I wasn't familiar with what happened here with the dark sword and passing it on. So I think that was more important from a plot perspective. And we know where we're going into the next two episodes. There's going to be a lot of loose ends that we're going to tie together. And we're going to just, we're going to get to my, one of my favorite parts. And it's just, I can't spoil it now, but when we talk about Grogu in the next two episodes. I'm just going to go off on it because I think it's the best thing there ever is. I hope our listeners will take that to heart. Now, I hope they will join us for our next episode, which will be episode seven entitled Spies. I am Tom Fox. And I'm Jay Rosen. Thanks for joining us.